Good evening and welcome to ATV News. I'm Charity Pepazani with your top stories this Monday. Black empowerment activist Sonny Chesi, 72, has been arrested for allegedly killing his wife in Zimbabwe. Chesi reportedly found his wife Dockers Chesi, 41, six months pregnant when he was released from prison about three weeks ago. He had been serving a seven-year jail term for selling his house in, Water in Waterford to two different people. Chessie beat his wife severely and left her to die. He later filed a police report claiming they had been attacked by robbers and he could not find her. When the police went to the scene, they found her in a critical state. She was taken to United Bulawayo Hospital where, the, where she died the following day. Police investigations later led to Chessie's arrest as the prime suspect in the murder case. Acting National Cri uh, Criminal Investigations Department spokesperson, Detective Sergeant Lanin Dele, confirmed that Chessie was in police custody. A 24-year-old woman from Hub House High Density Suburb in Montari, Zimbabwe, has escaped death after being abducted and held captive for 24 hours. Precious Monawa said she was forced to drink a blood a solution mixed with blood by four unknown people who wanted to kill her in a suspected case of Satanism. Manawa said she was abducted after three men and a woman in a black Toyota Noah asked her for directions, insisting that she accompany, she accompany them. The woman then grabbed her and stuck her head under the car seat. Manawa claimed that her adopters planned to dump her body in front of Revival Church to make people believe that Bishop Mtefa is a ritualist. Mackinaland Provincial Police spokes, spokesman Inspector Enoch Chisiri confirmed that the kidnapping confirmed the kidnapping and said investigation were in progress, but the four suspects are still at large. Continuing on the suspect of on the subject of Satanism, in Zambia, parents at Nachilinda Basic School in the Kazungula district are calling for the change of leadership as the following report from Movi TV reveals. Viewers should note that the story contains images that might that some viewers might find very unpleasant. These are some of the cries from these children of Nachilinda Basic School in Kazungola District. Cases of alleged Satanism have continued being the order of the day at the school. It is for this reason that some concerned parents have taken it upon themselves to call for the transfer of the named head teacher who's being accused with Satanism vice. He must go away, move away from this school. He's the only, the only, he's not the only head who go to running edge college. Mbanji ba ma teachers ba train di ba ma hey who qualify who are better than himself. E onka ni yaba ita affect. Taba choni mane bando yo wa mane bari angi dazi budu. Taba choni mama taba oni inka ne yo. Tuwa langa tuwa tia gamenda itu kwa si please ba na besu. Ba mui ba na wa taba chibo di ba chio yo. Kuzikor. Ni na mbabu yo shonte mi mi zi ba na ba chio yo wa. Kabora mui kazo wida kun. Others have appealed to Kazungula District Board Education Secretary Mr. Samson Sakala to find a lasting solution to this problem. Kote tuwa iku lomba ku government kuti, oyu headmaster kwa noko nshikana. Olo sunu lino, kapa junza, oyu headmaster tuwa lomba. And Mr. Sakala, who denied to comment on camera, has told Movie TV News in an interview that plans are underway to find a lasting solution to the ongoing problem. Memory Chpili, Movie TV News, in Kazu. A bus has overturned 103 kilometers from Bulawayo in Zimbabwe, leaving five Zambians dead and several injured. Zambia Police Service uh, Deputy Relations Officer Charity Monganga Chanda said in the press statement 
that the Marco Polo bus belonging to Mtsini bus services was coming from South Africa to Lusaka via Zimbabwe. The injured have been admitted to St. Luke's and Impila Hospital in, Hang in Hangwe, while the bodies of the deceased are laying in the mortuary at the same hospital. Officer Monganga Chanda confirmed that the accident happened on 25th November 2012 around 1 a.m. So we saw Liam and Michael at Old Trafford on Friday, but now they're back in the studio to tell us about the weekend's Premier League action. Thanks, Charity. Well, for those of you that joined us at Old Trafford, you'll have seen me and Michael feeling very excited about a potentially big weekend in the English Premier League. I'm afraid to say it did not live up to expectations and was one of the most boring weekends in terms of goals and, and action that we've witnessed in a long time, but it still could be a pivotal weekend at the top of the table. The big game of the weekend was Manchester City versus Chelsea. They travelled to Stamford Bridge, the champions, to take on Chelsea. And of course, it was the first game for new boss Rafael Benitez. Well, perhaps the biggest talking point of the weekend was the ridiculously bad reaction that Benitez got from his home fans. At one point, the stadium announcer couldn't be heard over the boos ringing out for their new boss. Was it a bit harsh? Not really. Di Matteo was a fan's favourite. I think that was the highlight of the match. Uh, that section where the fans really showed the money, the owner, what they think of his decision. Well, the result was nil-nil. You, you could say City arguably edged it in terms of chances, but this was really defence versus defence, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was like the two teams were afraid to attack, or more, more like a game of chess. And when you have football being chess, no one will make a move. And I can actually see it was so boring that Michael hasn't actually got any notes written on his page there. Yeah. Normally this would have lots of interesting detailed notes about all the action, but today there's nothing, is there? Well, there, there is nothing I can say. There, there's nothing I can write, as you can see. <laughs> it's totally empty, because uh, Liverpool, uh, Chelsea had no tactics empty, Man City empty as well. So I'll just put this aside. <laughs> And uh, this man, Fernando Torres, it's hoped that Rafael Benitez is going to get him firing, but he's really got his work cut out. Another lacklustre performance from the Spaniards, so we'll have to see if he can get some goals under his old boss. Another nil-nil game to tell you about. So this man, Brendan Rodgers, visit his old team, Swansea, in the Premier League. We both thought that Liverpool would have a tough game in this one, and it was a, a closely fought contest. Another very boring game with very few chances which leaves Liverpool still down in 12th position, but Swansea up to 8th. So Swansea will be presumably happier with the point than Liverpool. Well, they will be happy with the point. Uh, plus, it's also one point over their former boss as well, and they'll take it any day. That's a good point, and whereas Benitez got a wholeheartedly bad reaction from the fans, it's fair to say Brendan Rodgers got mixed reactions from the Swansea fans, some of them applauding him for the great work he did while at the club, but some of them still a little bit bitter that he left them when they presumably feel the job was not fully completed. Well, so that's a nil-nil, and we've bizarrely enough got another nil-nil to tell you about next. And there's no notes on your sheet for this one either, is there, Michael? There's no notes on my sheet, there's no notes on my mind, there's no notes anywhere for this one. For those, for those that know Michael Mambo, he is an Arsenal fan. So, presumably, a very frustrating performance, nil-nil at Aston Villa. What are your thoughts? Well, the coach made uh, bad decisions. He rested Wilshere. There was no creativity. There was no impact. He had Ramsey on. And it's ironic that you have Ramsey here like this, because this is how he is all season, fumbling about. He, he, he's, not, he's not the player he used to be. And, I don't think you ever re rediscover that form. So it's maybe high time as well we did at Chelsea at Arsenal. And last, sort of last few minutes, Arsene Wenger was criticised because he brought on Coughlin, the defender, took off an attacking player. Is he fair to get that criticism? I know you've, you've had your own criticism for Wenger in the past. Considering that it was a boring match, first and foremost, both, both teams lacked uh, incision. Uh, 
it would be fair on him to bring in a, a defender. After all, he wouldn't have wanted to lose the match. So maybe that's his line of thinking. And already when your manager is making those decisions, when you're looking for him, to, if it's, for example, Alex Ferguson, he'll bring in Chicharito, he'll bring in Anderson, all those are offensive midfielders. Maybe Arsene Wenger doesn't have those options. So it's also something that he will have to look at over the transfer window, or if it's bringing him in young talent. He always say we recruit from inside, but if there's no one inside, you have to go and look outside. Yeah, much like you with no notes on your sheet, you have to deep, <laughs> dig deep into your brain to get something yeah. out there. Well, this is a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer, well said. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, from one Arsenal fan to another, we've spoke to him before, we've got John V on the line. He's an Arsenal fan from Zimbabwe, currently living in South Africa. So, are you, like Mambo, pretty disappointed with this result, John? To me, it was a fair... Uh, it was a fair... Last week, it was a fair week. What can I say that? Because there's been, uh, it has been a pretty week. We 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 beat uh, uh, what's this uh, Spurs, and we qualify for the Champions League. But it's only that we we were unfortunate to 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 get a point against Aston Villa. But to me, it was a fair fair match. It's only that we don't have enough. Uh, uh, Send a, send a half uh, midfielders, uh, defensive midfielder like Song. I believe if Song was there, someone was there like Song, who's strong at the middle of the park, uh, I think we would have been winning these matches like this. Our problem is with uh, the defensive midfield. And Michael, from one Arsenal fan to the other, do you have a question for John? Yeah, John, what are, what are your thoughts about RVP, the men that I feel we're still missing? Uh, not really Van Persie. The person I really miss is Alexandra Song at the middle of the defensive midfield. That's where we are lacking very much because it's like with two teams in one pitch, like Arsenal have got two teams in one pitch because they will be center, center backs and the, the, the four four defenders and there's no center half here, Oteta is gone, Ramsey is not even defensive, he can't even mark. So uh Kazola is an attacking midfielder, he can't defend. So I think I I, I miss some much than Van Persie at this stage. Okay, John, if you could just stay on the line because we're gonna gonna come back to you to ask you about a few other games shortly. In the meantime, we're going to talk about, finally, we've got some goals to talk about, and it's uh, Manchester United, who, uh, another lacklustre performance, really, from the Red Devils. They were 1-0 down to a Jamie Mackey strike for QPR, with new QPR boss Harry Redknapp watching from the stand. But as so often they've done this season, Man United, they got themselves together and they came back from behind. It's almost as if they have to let another team score before they even start to get going, isn't it? Well, it's not about letting another team score. It's how bad defensively they are that another team has to score first for their attackers to put in more effort to get that equaliser and the winning goal. As Alex Ferguson said, there was only really 10 minutes in the game where United played at their best. And in that 10 minutes came goals from Johnny Evans, Javier Hernandez, and perhaps most poignantly, this man, Darren Fletcher, who most fans will know has had a torrid time with a bowel complaint that's kept him out of the game for over a year so he must be delighted to get back on the score sheet but maybe 3-1 flattered United a bit in this one they're now top of the league again they've thought they've got there as we've said before without really playing that well haven't they that's the mark of a champion winning when you're not playing well getting those points when you're playing when you're not playing well and when you are playing well getting more points Okay, um, John, still on the line in uh, in South Africa for us. What do you think now with United top of the league? Are they favourites for the title? Uh, I they still have we still have a long way to go for them to just to to to, to say they are the the favourites. I mean, like uh, we still got uh, uh, Chelsea is playing well. It's only that they have to adapt to the new new coach coaching department but to me Chelsea they got more uh, 
the to me they are more favourite than Manchester United. And quick word on the earlier game we discussed. What do you think about the appointment of Rafael Benitez as Chelsea boss? Can he do a job for them? Uh, to me, Rafael Ban- I don't have any problem with Rafael Benitez. He is a good uh, manager. He's been winning Champions League with uh, uh, Liverpool, and he did a lot of things uh, to, 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 to other teams like Inter Milan and the like. But the move that Chelsea did was not actually a real uh, uh, nice. Move. You cannot just fire him somebody because he has lost. Uh, that game, that Champions League game against Juventus. Okay, now we better have a quick word about West Brom. They are the surprise package of the Premier League this season. Their 4 2 win over Sunderland, a cracking win, takes them up to third spot in the Premier League. Absolutely remarkable achievement. What do you put it down to? It's football. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the surprise package of the season, as you put it. They're, they're doing nothing differently from what they did the previous seasons, but they keep on getting the results. That's the most important thing. Every team, every team when they play, they'll get chances, but do you convert those chances into goals? And I suppose one thing to be said is Steve Clark, the manager's come in, and as he said, he hasn't changed much, has he? It's just he's just tried to keep the same things that they were doing right last season, and he's been rewarded. Exactly. Steve Clark is a very good manager. He was at Chelsea before and Chelsea were doing very well under him. It actually surprised everyone when Abramovich again sacked him or did not renew his contract, whichever way. But good managers always stand out and I'm really happy for him. Well, as we say, West Brom in third place, so let's hope that their form stays on and they don't fall away and they can finish their highest ever position. In other footballing news now, and uh, it's well, actually, let's have a quick look at the Premier League first. As we said, Man United, top of the league. One point ahead of Man City. I mean, is it, it's going to be these two all the way, isn't it, really? It's now, it's now a two-horse race. If, if they hadn't changed anything for Chelsea, it would have been a three-horse race. But now it's a two-horse race. And just remarkable, we were just mentioning it then, to see West Brom in third place. I think all Baggies fans must be looking at that and pinching themselves, must not they? Yeah, this, this, this is a fluke. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it will be like this after Christmas. Yeah, it's, it's, it, only time will tell with that one. The thing with Arsenal is that they've not played particularly well, but they're still in sixth, and you have to say that there will be favourites for that fourth spot, would you, would you not say? I'm going to put them on third spot. Third spot, OK. On okay. third spot. They would they'll do just about enough to get that spot. Maybe Chelsea will be number four, but that's how it's going to pan out. You find often with, with English football that there will be a few surprise packages early on, but at the end of the season, it'll probably be the top four in the top four spots, won't it? Yeah, it's it's because of the money that these uh, teams generate. West Brom does not generate the same money as Man City, United, Chelsea, Arsenal, let alone Liverpool. And so it's, it's mainly going to be about resources. And probably what's helping West Brom as well is it's only competing in a few uh, cups. Uh, so it's, it's a bit of an advantage for as compared to the other teams. Well, I think all the neutral fans out there will hope that West Brom can keep winning and upsetting the apple cart there for as long as possible. Two other news now. And it's been announced that the voting has started for the BBC's African Footballer of the Year for this year. And uh, the candidates, as you can see behind me, are Demba Bar of Senegal and Newcastle. You've got Yunus Belhanda, who is a Moroccan player, plays for the French champions Montpellier and helped them to the Ligue 1 Championship last season. We've got Didier Drogba, I think we, we all know who Didier Drogba is and we know about what a fantastic season he had for Chelsea last season before leaving to join Shanghai's Shenzhou. Of course, he is an Ivorian, is Drogba. Then we've got what we think might be a favourite of many of our viewers, and that is Chris Katongo, the Zambian captain, who took his team to African Cup of Nations glory last season. And finally, the big man from Man City, it's Yaya Torre, again of Ivory Coast, and of course of champions, champions in England, Manchester City. It's a great list of players. Go on, who's going to win it? There's no competition, Drogba is going to win it, simply because if you look at the Chelsea form and 
what he managed to help them achieve when everyone had virtually written them off. And this was the last hooray for the big man and he did it in style. I have to agree with you. I mean, they've each done their own individual brilliant performances. This guy helped Montpellier to the league. Denver Barr with his scoring form for both Newcastle and Senegal. Katongo, the captain of Zambia, and we all know we see Yaya Torre play week in, week out, but the great man, Didier, he gets the vote from ATV. But just we've been contacting you guys on Facebook and the overwhelming choice for our fans on ATV was that Chris Katongo should win it. For those of you that want to vote in this, you need to go to bbc.co.uk forward slash sport, go on the Africa section and you'll find this competition and the voting closes Monday the 17th of December. So get involved. Finally, the last bit of news for us to round up, it's these boys again, the Dynamos. What a fantastic season they've had. They won the Mbada Diamonds Cup final, beating Monomatapa 2-0 with two goals from Roger Mutuma and it secures a glorious double for the Dynamos. Michael, what a season. It's been a terrific season for them and I hope to see them next season with the same form, with the same hunger, with the same drive and to go and do a clean sweep of four trophies. And it's vindication for the manager as well because they didn't get off to the best start and those people calling for his head. How happy and proud will he be of the team? Well, he he must be the luckiest man ever to win two cups in one season and uh, we wish him all the best. Okay. Well, well done again to the Dynamos and we'll be back on Friday, hopefully ahead of a more exciting Premier League weekend. And hopefully on Friday I'll have more to share with you guys. I can promise there will be notes on that page. So if anything, join us for that. See you then. And today's photo of the day has been sent in by Tendai Pop Pen6 and says happy first birthday to Anesu. Thanks for watching ATV News. See you the same time tomorrow and have a good night.